the building code just adopted a new section in the code that is brand spanking new. Never been there before. It's about shipping containers. They never did have a section about building with shipping containers until now. That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Up to now, building with shipping containers has been a lot like the wild, wild west. We, had, we did not have a building code really to tell us what we can and cannot do. And because of that, the, the government has decided, well, we're going to start adopting a new building code. And that, well, the same building code is International Building Code, which is pr predominant throughout the nation. Not every town has it, but all, the most, of, most of America has adopted it in one way or, or the other. And back in 2019, they had uh, started, they started writing a section about using shipping containers as a building product, but it hasn't come into effect until now. And now it's adopted. It's in the 2021 International Building Code. I'm in New Jersey and they adopted it just this last year. And it goes into effect, fully in effect in March of 2023. And um, we're just still kind of learning about what is in there. And I needed you to know that it is coming your way as well. The uh, I went to a seminar just recently to learn how they updated the International Building Code. And the instructor in that is an expert. He's, he's such an expert that he's one of those people that wrote the code or actually go there to vote what stays in and what is not going to be adopted in the code. And so he was going through this and I was telling him the reason why I'm in his class is because I want to learn more about other things, but particularly how the shipping container section has been added. And I want to learn more about what all the things are inside of there. And um, his answer was basically, well, you know, go ahead and read the code. I think it's self-explanatory. Codes, building codes is like reading the tax code. When you read the, the building code, it's going to refer to other sections, other sections, other sections. And by the time you read one paragraph, you've actually spent half an hour or an hour reading other sections to see if it's applicable to your case or not. So it's not really that straight line simple. And I'm not going to go through the weeds and the, all, about all the things that this do section talks about. This, this video is mainly to let you know, just kind of like a heads up. This is a new section and this is a new thing. It's a new code that's going to affect you eventually, if not now, when you're designing and building buildings with shipping containers. This is in the uh, International Building Code. I'm looking at my uh, laptop here because it's so new. I don't have it memorized. I just want to share with you some highlights of where to look. It's in section um, 31, I'm uh, sorry, it's in section yeah, 3100 and the 3100 is for special constructions. Special constructions is just kind of like a catch-all. IBC, I'm calling it International Building Code, IBC has got a section for wood, a section for masonry, a section for HVAC, which refers you to the mechanical code and think plumbing even, and it affects, and it refers to the plumbing code, but, um, they must not have really had a clear place to put this. So they kind of stuck it in the back way back in section 31 and, um, on their special construction, a special construction also includes things like marquees, awnings, um, you know, uh, there's, I could read a lot of things in there, but there's, there, it's, it's things that may not even be applicable to a shipping container, but it's, it's in the, uh, section 31 and under section 31 is it's three, one, one, five. And, um, if you want to look it up and, uh, section 3115 intermodal shipping containers is the subtitle of that. And it's basically for the reuse and repurpose of buildings 
or structures that are using shipping containers or repurposing shipping containers to build buildings, I should say. And there's some exceptions. Um, they, there are things like if it's already previously accepted to be a building, uh, there's also uh, if it's going to be used for stationary storage uh, for battery arrays. Um, there's also an exception for oh uh, air chillers, engine generators, and uh, modular data data centers. Uh, there's this exception for where this code doesn't apply for shipping containers, housing, or supporting experimental equipment. Now, what could that be? Uh, from uh, different sections of 3115 section of the IBC, provided that the, these are exceptions for the experimental equipment, provided they comply with the following, such as such units shall be a single standalone unit supporting at grade level and used only for occupancies as specified under the risk category, blah, blah, blah. Go look that up. And then such units are located in a minimum of eight feet from adjacent structures and also in a hurricane prone region and flood hazard areas. Such units are designed in accordance to applicable provisions. There's also a subsection here. It says you basically have to have construction documents that have dimensions in them. Duh. So if you, if you are going to go for a permit, they're going to ask for drawings and the drawings going to have to explain kind of the dimensions of the place and what you're going to be building and how you, what materials you're going to use to build it with. They're also wanting to know, they want to see the label and you know, those labels that are on the door of the shipping container. And it talks about the manufacturer when it was made, what kind of weight it was designed to hold. Um, those labels, by the way, I describe it in detail in an article I'll leave down in, below and the description below. Um, but there's, uh, they say that it has to have it. And then later on it says, but you know, the building official might allow you to paint over it or remove it, um, just after you, but you got to get their approval to do that. They also have a section about protecting the wood from, uh, decay and termites. Now, you know, basically possibly know that the wood in the shipping container often high times have pesticides. In fact, that pesticide is listed in that label we were just talking about. Uh, under floor ventilation, unless it's uh, stacked um, or as a basement and a cellar is below it is and uh, roof assemblies. You got to talk about that joints and voids are going to want to know how the fire assembly is continuous. And if there's joints when they're joining together, how are you going to close that off with a fire stop? Uh, structural issues, and there's a, the rest of it is basically about structural issues. They talk about um, the foundations and the anchorage. They talk about welds. Um, they talk about the general structural design needing to be designed with the shear loads in, in mind. And in fact, they even have a chart. And in that chart, they have a list of different kind of shipping containers and then what kind of shear loads that you need to maintain or design for. So those are some things your structural engineer will want to look at and make sure that if once you're cutting the holes for the doors and windows, it's maintaining the strength to, to hold, withstand those different loads that this code now is depicting. And let's say simplified structures, they also give some coefficients and things that your structural engineer will want to look at too. So just want to give you, give you a heads up on this video. There's a code out there now that's going to affect you and me when we're designing the shipping containers. It didn't, it didn't exist before. And like I said, it was a wild, wild west before having it, but now it could be a little bit of a wild, wild west. Now we do have it because we are now learning how to interpret that code and every municipality is going to have their own inspectors and reviewers of drawings. And um, they may have a different interpretation about what is permitted and not, but maybe this will help kind of narrow down the, the vagary uh, of that. So um, that's, that's basically what I wanted to share with you right now. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you uh, find this 
really applicable to what you're wanting to do when you're designing your shipping containers go ahead and subscribe because i'm going to be discussing a little bit more in depth about codes and also about other cool things you need to know about when you're designing and building buildings with shipping containers we'll see you soon